What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It's a beautiful day in the garden today and so I figured I'd come outside today to talk about my mid-summer spring regimen. Now a lot of times, a lot of you know that we grow organically and a lot of you that have uh, pest problems or disease problems, you come to me and say, Luke, what do you use on your plants? I'm starting to have an outbreak and I really need to take care of it ASAP. I need to get rid of it now what can I use? And so I figured I'd come outside today to talk about my spring regimen and just kind of talk about the, the things that I use and, and how I use them because spraying regimens can be very effective even as an organic gardener and you don't have to go crazy, you don't have to use anything harsh and it can be very, very effective. So I wanted to talk about that. But first, I wanna give you a little PSA about spraying. So the first thing to note is anytime you are spraying, you want to go gentle. You wanna go gentle because when it's very hot and your plants are already stressed and it's high humidity, anytime you're spraying a chemical, no matter if it's organic or inorganic, a chemical is really going to stress the, the surface of the leaves out and the entire plant as a whole. And you can sometimes kill the plant entirely if it's not necessary or, or if it's too strong. And what I mean by not necessary is oftentimes the plant's just going through a little bit of stress and it can heal itself if the weather's change, if the weather conditions change. So let's say it's really dry and you get some rain, well, that's going to help. That's actually going to help you out because the plant's no longer going to be in a drought-like condition. If it's very hot and the weather gets cooler, it's no longer hot anymore. So whatever was stressing the plant out sometimes can just fix itself. When it comes to a you know, pest problem, a small amount of pests, sometimes, more often than not, we find beneficial insects will come in and actually regulate the amount of uh, bad pests or bad bugs we have in the garden. And so that natural equilibrium, we didn't have to do anything to control those pests. Nature just came in and did it for us. The next thing from the PSA, as I kind of alluded to, is make sure you need to spray in the first place. If it's something that, can that is going to handle itself, if it's something that is going to kind of fix itself naturally, you don't need to spray. When we come in and spray is once it has gotten beyond that point. As it's gotten beyond that point we and we realize, okay, this is getting out of control. I need to take uh, control of this situation right now because it's not going to get any better any quicker. And so where that would kind of come in is with something like powdery mildew. If we have one leaf that has powdery mildew, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut that leaf away. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna cut the leaf away and let the plant grow. If it's like three or four leaves, I'll keep an eye on it, but I won't jump in right away. As soon as it becomes about half the plant, that's where I start to say, okay, half the plant, there's no way this is gonna get any better any quicker, I'll come in and spray. So that is my PSA on spraying because I've seen so many people come in for a simple little problem like, I don't know, uh, a hole in their leaf. Like, uh, I don't have any examples of holes in their leaves. Um, well, either way, you can trust me. Here, this, this is a good example. So you see this tiny little hole in the leaf here? This tiny little hole right here, maybe you can see it. See that tiny little hole? A tiny little hole? You'd be shocked at how many times people, they come out to their garden and they look at their garden through like a microscope and they say, oh my gosh, I've got a tiny little hole. But they're not looking at their entire garden and realizing that their entire garden is actually, for the most part, very healthy. And it's not worth addressing that tiny little hole because it's not, number one, you can't identify which pest it is or if it's even a pest in the first place. And since you can't identify it and it's only one tiny little hole, I say, don't worry about it. But sometimes they don't like to heed my advice and they'll go and spray it and then they come back in like a week and a half and say, look, my entire plant's wilted, it's dying, it's dead, it's turning brown, I think I've killed it. So what'd you do? Well, I sprayed it. I didn't say it, I said not to spray it. I know, but I thought I could spray it, I thought I could fix it and now it's dead, what can I do? Well, a little too late now. <laughs> So don't spray your plants if you don't need to. And if you do, go gentle. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the two sprays that I really like to use and then we'll get into some other ones that I've used in the past that do work, I just don't like them as much. So the two types of sprays that I really like to use is my first one is my go-to and that is baking soda. Everybody's got baking soda on hand or at least anyone that does any baking or has a smelly fridge, you've probably got some baking soda. Or if you, you know, kind of scrub some pans, baking soda is great for that too. So I love baking soda. Baking soda is very gentle. You can dilute it down or increase the, the, um, the, uh, the concentration of it depending on how much you use. So it's very, uh, it's very versatile in that, um, in that sense. But it's also, um, it's also organic and it's also very inexpensive. This is not very expensive at all. This box cost us like, it was like, like a 
buck 25 or two bucks or something like that. Super, super inexpensive. And so what I will do is in a spray bottle like this, um, I will actually take a gallon. I'll take a, a one gallon container because it's very easy to work with gallons. It's very complicated and confusing to work with spray bottle amounts because uh, every spray bottle is different. You know, if I say, if I say this bottle here is 750 milliliters, well, down, 750 milliliters down here, I filled it up to here, it's kind of half full. It's just so, it's so odd to go with this and, and then say, well, I recommend like two tablespoons to a gallon of water. And then someone says, well, how many gallons are in 620 milliliters? Because mine's not quite full. And if I can mix it too much, and you're just confusing yourself and you're overcomplicating the process. <laughs> and I do too. I gotta put, if I have to pull out a Google, uh, if I have to pull out a Google conversion unit, uh, conversion calculator, it's already over my head. So um, I like to keep things really simple. I just pull out a one gallon container. And in that one gallon container, I will add one gallon of water, two tablespoons of baking soda, three drops of dish soap, and three tablespoons of vegetable oil. So again, two tablespoons, three drops of dish soap, three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now you might be asking, why do you add the vegetable oil? Why the dish soap? Well, it's because if you just spray something on your leaves, oftentimes it'll just run right off the surface of the leaf because the leaf actually has kind of a waxy barrier that protects it. And what you need to do is you need to get something to stick onto the surface of the leaf. And so by adding a little bit of soap, it's going to help the water and the oil mix together because if you ever made a, a salad dressing, a vinaigrette, you'll notice that the oil just kind of sits on top. Or if you ever made a, like a lava lamp in, in a high school science class or whatever, uh, the, the oil sits on top of the, the water. And that's because oil and water don't mix, but you need an emulsifier. And an emulsifier is just something that helps aid the mixing of those two, uh, of those two mixtures, and so, or those two uh, materials. And so uh, you just add a few drops of dish soap, it only takes a couple drops, and you can mix it in. And that helps to actually have the baking soda solution stick to the surface of the leaf. That's the only thing that the soap and the oil is actually used for. But I will use this for things like blights, powdery mildews. I love it because this is slightly acidic and it actually creates an acidic environment for the leaf that the, uh, that the blight can't stick to or it can't colonize. The next thing that I like to use is copper fungicide. Now copper fungicide works exactly the same way that the baking soda does. The copper fungicide is just a pre-mixed concentrate. It's very effective. It's, a, it's, well, it's a lot more expensive than a box of baking soda, but it can be a little more effective because copper fungicide will stick to the, the surface of the leaf a little bit better. So if you're looking for something that's just a, a quick spray down and, and forget about it, this is going to be very effective. This also stays on the surface of the leaf longer than the baking soda spray will. So not only does it stick better, but it stays longer. So it's a little bit more effective in my opinion, but copper can be harmful to the soil in large amounts. Now we're not using large amounts here, but if I don't specify that, I will have some of you, and I know the people that will say this, that will say, well, it's not great for worms. It's not great for worms. Copper in large quantities is harmful in the soil, just like any other, uh, you know, um, any other metal which copper is a metal, any other metal found in the soil can actually build up and uh, can create some, some issues for worms. So you don't wanna use large quantities. You don't wanna go just dumping a whole bottle of this on the soil, but in small amounts, it's fine. And it's organic, it's, this is OMRI listed. So you can't go wrong with a good copper fungicide. So those are the two that I really like. Now you might be asking, well, I don't have any copper fungicide. I don't have any baking soda. What else can I use? You can use apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is a very, uh, it's a very weak form of an acid. Well, it's, it's very acidic, but when you dilute it down, it becomes a very weak acid, very much like a baking soda. It's gonna be sprayed on the leaves, but the trick here is that it does not stick to the leaves whatsoever. <laughs> but if you already have blight, or you already have powdery mildew, this is a wonderful solution because it just kills the existing spores there. So I will use in a spray bottle like this because I'm not making up a gallon of that, I can guarantee you that. You're going to need about, uh, so in a spray bottle like this, you're going to need about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And that's a very simple spray that you can use to, uh, to wipe out all of the, the blight spores and powdery mildew spores. It's very, very effective. Now the next thing that you can use is milk. Now milk, uh, unlike acid is alkaline, it's a base, it's very basic. And you can actually use milk to work exactly the same way. 
the leaf surface needs to be a certain pH. If the pH is around seven, funguses can colonize very well. But if you take an acid, it becomes more like a pH of, of six or 6.5, slightly acidic, but just acidic enough that it can't colonize. Likewise, if you take some milk, you spray some milk on your leaves, it's going to create an inhospitable environment when it's a little too alkaline. It might be a pH of 6.5 or a pH of seven, or sorry, a pH of, of 7.5 or a pH of, of eight. And that gets you further away from the pH of seven, which is right in the middle. And that does not allow the, 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 uh, the fungus to colonize. Now this is great for things like powdery mildew. It's not so great for things like blight, which can be a little hardier. So if you're spraying down your, your cucumbers or your zucchini, you can do it. Now the downside of this is milk does stink. When it gets hot and it gets warm, even diluting down milk will give you that kind of sour milk smell throughout the air. I've tried it a couple years. That's why it's not included in my preferred list, but a lot of people have milk on hand and so you can use milk too. It's very effective and it does work. Now I do caution you guys because milk, um, like I said, milk can also uh, attract some flies and other things like that into your garden. So it can bring in some nasty unwanted stuff. So just keep that in mind. Now you might be asking yourself, well, I don't have a disease. I have a pest. What do I do? I only go with one spray. There's only one. I don't use neem oil. Neem oil is very potent. I'll use it in the early season. I'll use it in the late season. When it's cooler, it's less humid, it's less hot. The sun is less uh, direct in the sky. I'll use neem oil. I'll use things like pyrethrin, but I do not use them during midsummer. And the reason why is because it's so potent that it will burn your plants and it will kill them. It's very, very effective at doing uh, its job, which is killing. And it will, and even though it's organic and it's completely fine and completely safe to use during normal season, during mid season when it's really hot, I do not use it. I use BT. That's the only time I will ever attack a pest that is in my garden. And that is something like a cabbage worm, a tomato hornworm, tent caterpillars, and things like that. So I will use BT. I've got some tent caterpillars over there. I just sprayed them the other day and I use BT on them. And that's because uh, BT is not a chemical. It's a biological spray. It actually has Bacillus thuringiensis, And that is a beneficial bacteria that when you spray it on the leaves, uh, the, uh, the caterpillars actually ingest it and the bacteria gets inside of them and causes them to, uh, bad things happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> There's kids watching, bad things happen to them. So that is the only spray I use. And I'll repeat that for those that doubt me, that's the only spray I use from, Jan or from uh, July until August. Those two months, I will not do any other spray and that's because they're all very, they're very potent. And that's because pests are hardier than diseases. Just remember that, pests are hardier than diseases. The amount of concentration that you have to spray on them in order to control them is much more than a thing like a disease like powdery mildew or blight. So um, that's why it's, it's just always better to use physical removal. If you have Japanese beetles, take a, a butterfly net, soup them up, and, uh, and then drop them in a little jar of vegetable oil and they're done. They smother out and they're, they're dead. No sprays needed. Things like aphids, I'll use a, a hose, I'll spray them down really heavily or I'll take my finger with, um, with some, uh, some duct tape on the back. I'll just rub my plants down really gently and I'll collect the aphids like that. Or I'll let, uh, let mother nature come in and I'll let her bring in all of the, uh, I'll let the, you know, the natural controls like ladybugs come in. Ladybugs are a wonderful control for aphids. I don't need to spray anything on them. And so I have a lot of other things at my disposal for pest control that are not chemicals. So there you go, I really hope you enjoyed. I really hope that you learned something new. And again, this is something that I just use. So there's a lot of other options out there and there are a lot of other people that uh, will, will tell you other things as well. So it's just one of those cases where this is what I use, this is what works for me. But by all means, if, you, if, you, uh, if you've heard something else, do your research, do your due diligence, and all of your organic sprays are gonna work very similar. So uh, just make sure you dilute them down, make sure you don't use them at full strength, make sure you don't use them during the heat of the day and uh, you should be fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and I'll see you very soon. All right, see you guys. Bye.